Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the live stream. My name is Matt Bailey. I'm the National Ambassador for the Scotch Port Whiskey Society here in Australia. And I want to welcome you back and thank you so much for joining me for another uh, episode of Live with SMWS where we talk about good whiskey, discuss some of the upcoming releases, and in this case, take a look at Mortal of the Month from March Outturn. Here it is. Here is our March Outturn, as you can see on the screen there. Uh, up your whiskey game, it says in the front. This month is all about game changes. Happy autumn to you all as well, by the way. Happy 1st of March. Autumn? Autumn. Um, happy 1st of March, either which way you look at it, uh, and happy outturn week ahead. Um, this week, uh, is is all. we're going to look at a few releases from this outturn. We're going to have a look at, tonight we're looking at 80.19, Malt of the Month, Prickly Pines, Cones, and Buttery Scones. Scones? Scones? However you want to say it. Scones. Let's go with scones. We're a bit fancy, aren't we? We'll, we'll call it scones. Prickly pine cones and uh, buttery scones. Spicy and dry flavor profile, 80.19. I'll show it up on screen there as well, as you can see in my little cutaway screen there. <laughs> and um, we'll have a look at this release, have a taste through it from this outturn. This outturn also has the Game Changers virtual tasting, which, of course, was announced at the exact same time as the... Uh, as we went live with the virtual tasting, the Vaults virtual last Friday, I want to thank everyone who tuned in to Andrew and I talking about uh, the Vaults virtual because it was such an awesome night just to um, just to just to share with you all, just to share some old whiskies, some uh, interesting malts, some absolute timepieces, uh, and a special thanks and shout out to Andrew Durbage, our cellar master and New South Wales state manager, who um, who took that adventure with me live out of the office here which was fantastic. So I really appreciate that. Andrew, thank you so much. Um, I've got a glass. I've got an empty glass and I've got a full bottle. You know what that means. I need to crack this open. I'm going to crack it open live here tonight. But before I do, there we go. We announced the Game Changers virtual tasting, uh, which is on Saturday, the 20th of March. That goes on sale, I think, uh, this Friday, along with the rest of Outturn, of course. Yes, of course. It's in Outturn. It's to celebrate a whiskey club that has been pushing the envelope and changing the way whiskey is approached for nearly 40 years. March is all about game changes. That's what this month is about. That's what this month is about, enjoying these moments in history, these moments in time that we get to look back on and go, you know what, the society has been changing the whiskey landscape for nearly 40 years, and this tonight is no exception. 80.19 is a spicy and dry. It's one of uh, 235 bottles worldwide from that single cask. And it is an eight-year-old first Phil X bourbon barrel. So we're going to pick up some sweetness. We're going to pick up some spice. I'm going to open that right now live. Um, look at that. Ready to go. Oh, I got, you know what? Caps on or caps off? I know we've talked about that before. But anyway, here it is. <laughs> now I've lost it anyway, so it's fine. Here's the magic sound. There it is. So we're going to open this up. I'm going to pour a little bit of this, and I'm going to let that breathe in the glass for a moment. Whilst we have a quick discussion about this particular distillery, this particular whiskey. So this is, as I said, uh, this is prickly pine cones. And uh, there we are. Sorry, I'm just getting my right slide up here. Prickly pine cones and buttery scones, 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 scones. Distilled 16th of January 2012 and uh, bottled from a first fill ex-bourbon hogshead here. Let's have a look at this distillery. Let's dig a bit deeper into distillery 80.19. Distillery 80, I should say. Distillery 80 uh, was first, if you go if you go into Outturn, if you go into your uh, Outturn here, you can go to this Society Milestones here and you can get to, uh, where are we? 1990, Distillery 79 to 89, all brought on board. So you, we're going to assume fairly early in 1990 was 80.1. Let's just put that into perspective for a second. 80.1 was... Um, oh, it was a it was a fairly decent pour. I would say it's about thirty mils. Wouldn't say any more decent than a normal pour. That's what you should be pouring. There you go, thirty mils. Uh, Darren Howie, good to see you, mate. Hope you're well. Hunt, uh, happy Monday, Matt and crew. Thank you very much, Darren. And yes, that is a decent pour. As someone said, I agree. That is a decent pour. But you've got to have a decent pour, especially with that first one off the bottle. There, I've just poured that now. Um, so uh, eighty dot one nine eighty dot one, I should say, uh, first featured in nineteen ninety. It was a 1978 cask from memory. I'd have to go back through my notes and check that. But um, I'm, I'm probably very close. 1978, that's right, 1978 and bottled February 1990. Very cool to think about that for a second because it was uh, 2001 that the distillery first actually released, uh, sorry, that the distillery first released a single malt. 
So the society released whiskey from distillery 80, this distillery, 11 years before this distillery released any of their spirit as a single malt whiskey. That's quite fascinating. I'm always amazed by those kind of stats and numbers. That probably, yeah, that was Jules, wasn't it, Miranda? I'll, I'll, <laughs> Miranda, I can see your name because you know how to let StreamYard see your account. I, but if you want to be remain private, you can, of course. Um, but uh, Miranda's out of you, Jules. That's too bad. And uh, yes, uh, and happy Monday. There was a decent pour, but when I say decent, it's pretty much I, I can eyeball thirty mils pretty well. And I think that's uh, I think I've got that pretty much bang on there. First nose of that. Just whilst I'm letting that sit in the glass and open up for a moment, first nose is it is immediately quite a savoury nose. It is quite definitely befitting of the spicy and dry flavour profile rather than something like sweet, fruity and mellow or uh, young and sprightly. Quite developed for a first fill bourbon barrel of only eight years old. Only eight years old, I should say. Anyway, I'm just going to nose that, let that sit for a moment whilst we talk for a little bit longer. 80.1 came out in 1990. So 11 years. We were bottling their spirit for 11 years before they did. So you're probably wondering, where did the rest of their spirit go? It went into blending. This was this distillery uh, was an integral part of J and B. Justarini, Justarini and Brooks blended whiskey. It was an integral part of it. Uh, it might still be to some extent. I don't know. I just know that the the history of distillery eighty and the history of J and B blend are fairly intertwined. This distillery as well is situated pretty much next door to Glenrothes Distillery. Which is uh, sorry, not Glen Rothes, next to um, Glen Grant. Sorry, right next door to Glen Grant, um, which is of course code number nine in our system, and is a uh, de- is definitely on the lighter and more um, floral kind of notes of whiskies. So when you think of this distillery, uh, you think of Distillery Eighty. You think um, you don't generally think heavy profile. You don't think those sort of uh, malt lackey kind of uh, meaty kind of vibes. It's the opposite of that. It, this distillery uses a purifier pipe in its setup uh, and is, um, oh, I've got a little oh, notification telling me my, is my connection okay? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's it's a very meaty kind of setup for this distillery. Uh, it's, sorry, the opposite, God, uh, the opposite of a meaty setup. Um, and they were, it's, it uses a purifier pipe that makes it for quite a light and floral spirit, I should say. Very much a distiller, a distillery that you, is used for blending. It is a workhorse distillery of the Diageo Folio. I have a video I'm going to show you very quickly, courtesy of our friends over at the Single Cask uh, in Singapore, who recorded this video. So big shout out to my old mate Brendan for this um, this drone footage of, that he got. Um, and the society's labels were better than the distilleries too. I won't disagree with you there, but the mere fact that we we're bottling single cask, single malt whiskey from this distillery. But, uh, more than a decade before they were, I think is rather cool. Now, just whilst that dram is opening up and I'm having a talk about it, it is our malt of the month for March. It's only 145. For a society cask to be 145 uh, is quite simply phenomenal for me. I think that's really something that we can be proud of and and um, and talk about. One $145 uh, doesn't get you even very far in commercially available malts anymore. It doesn't. If you, if you go to... In, I challenge you to go into a Dan Murphy's and find me an eight-year-old, age-stated, single-cast, cast-strength, panel-approved single-cast in that sort of realm. Brendan is a legend. He bloody is, isn't he? Big shout-out to Brendan. I really want to just thank him again for um for this. So I'm going to show um, – I'm just going to show you this video now of Distillery 80. I haven't even said the name of the distillery, but the video will kind of give it away. Here you go. There we go. 
just a nice little bit of aerial footage of the distillery there. Um, really is something. It's really such a, it is a beautiful distillery. Uh, its location is stunning. Uh, they don't do tours. They don't do visitor center. They don't do um, any of that. It is definitely a workhorse distillery, uh, but it is one that I think is well worth mentioning. And members may recall 80.9 Champagne and Roses, a personal favorite of mine, along with 80.14 that we had late last year, October outturn from memory, or it may have been the festive outturn, but I think it was October. Uh, maple syrup, maple mountain syrup spring, something called like that. It was a spicy and sweet one in this profile. So we went from light and delicate to spicy and sweet. And now we're looking at one in the spicy and dry flavor profile. Uh, we do get some members often mentioning that they love the spicy and dry ones. I'm, in I'm inclined to agree. I think the spicy and dry is one of my fla favorite flavor profiles because uh, it often has a nutty, savory, uh, old school note to some of the malt, um, which is which I love. And you can see it across any age statement. That's something that sometimes members might forget. Flavor profile is not dictated by cask type, by age, by anything. It's dictated by flavor, and that's what we like to focus on. So it's 58.9%. It's eight years old in the spicy and dry flavor profile. And I'm going to have a nose. A little bit floral, of course. Soft and fruity a little bit as well. Like a, like vanilla biscuit. Vanilla wafer, I should say. So a little bit of sweetness in there. Tiniest bit of like ginger. I think the, the ginger note is really sort of what gives it that spicy and dry uh, element there. I'm going to have a taste. Yeah. Very deserving of the spicy and dry profile there. Wow. See how this one handles a bit of water? Now, I'm going to show you how much I'm putting in so you can replicate it at home if should you feel fit. Just a nice dash, just a dash to bring it down a bit, maybe bring it down to sort of low 50s. I mean, if you want to go so far as to, you know, uh, what do you call it? Rectif uh, um, uh, use a hydrometer, sorry, to determine the proof of your spirit that you're drinking, you could do that. You can get one of the... Um, this hydrometer, electronic hydrometers for about a thousand bucks. I wouldn't worry if I were you. <laughs> wow. Like with all uh, young ex bourbon whiskies, uh, a drop of water opens it right up. I'm suddenly getting far more of um, the pine cone note. Even slightly now, now I'm getting sort of the strawberries. More ginger as well. Lemon sherbet, ginger. Prickly pine cones. You know, we had a 70 dot something. Uh, the code I won't be able to recall. 70.28 or something like that a while ago. That was in the spicy and dry that had a pine cones reference in the name. I think we featured it at Gathering 2019. I'm not going to be able to recall the code on that one, but that was something else. But this is uh, this reminds me of that in many ways. It's I love I love being able to experience car strength whiskey. That is obviously high proof, but uh, still, and is but comes from a very light flavor profile. Does that make sense? Sort of spirit that is um, uh, where you don't need weight of spirit uh, to carry underneath the proof. I don't know if I'm explaining that correctly. As in, like, I find that sometimes experiencing these whiskies that you only ever see at 40% at best, or even just going into blenders, when you get to taste these kind of things that are sitting at car strength. And uh, sort of like, uh, it's like car strength fruit and floral notes, which are just unbelievable. Get that. I get what they mean by the buttery scones. It, it's, there's that definitely that savory scone element. There's scones without any fruit either. Scones without any of those, uh, anything added to it. Who adds stuff to scones? Like, what would you add? Like, strawberry, uh, I mean, uh, sultanas or something. It's a very, um, there's almost a herbal note, a slight sort of just on the edge there, just like a slight herbal note. Mm. Sits very well. Sits very well with a few drops of water. I wouldn't add any more than that. I did though. It works really well with the sort of presence in the mouth. The mouthfeel is fantastic. 
very um quite viscous for a lighter character spirit as well off these distilleries. Lovely stuff. Truly lovely stuff. Now that's that's 80.19 uh prickly pine cones in buttery scones. It's in our outturn. There it is on the screen. I'll bring up a nice uh, big image of it for us all to see there. There it is. It's malt of the month for March in our game changes outturn. The whole idea behind the game changes outturn is focusing on the lesser seen codes, focusing on the milestones that the society's had, and focusing on the flavor as always. And that's why it's a very mixed bag, a very diverse outturn. Every outturn, I almost say the same thing as sometimes I say it's one of the most diverse outturns we've ever offered up. And I feel like at the moment, more and more, we are heading down that path where the diversity of the outturn is growing and the, uh, and the, diversity of flavor profiles and of course codes and types of cask is growing as well even in this very outturn i think it's 10 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 out of the 12 flavor profiles are featured in one outturn that's a huge diversity i mean all we're missing are light and delicate and heavily peated so everything in the middle is, is sort of covered right there but the, the article about being the original game changes is quite something to think that this cask, we picked this out for Mortal of the Month because this is kind of an original game changer, this 80.19. In case you'd missed the beginning of this video, we were bottling this as a single malt before they were. I love that kind of information. There's a few codes like that in our system. 80, of course, is one. 61 is one. Uh, there's uh, 30 is one. Look, there's, there's a whole bunch of codes which we bottled as single malts. Of course, single cask as well, but as single malts before that distillery considered having a, a, even a single malt range at all. Or as Pip likes to say, as Pip Hills, the founder of the society, used to like used to say uh, that, that he was uh, he was picking the eyes out of the great stock and uh, bottling it and it took most distilleries five or even some ten to work out what he was doing. And that's still, I mean, we, we still have a great relationship with distilleries today, but that's kind of part of the fun. I'm going to enjoy the rest of this. I hope you learned a little bit, a few things along the way. Enjoyed a few things with me tonight. And... Um, uh, and looking forward to this Friday's outturn. I'm going to put a little comment up on our social media group on Facebook. So if you're not in our Facebook group already, please join in, which I know many of you already are, but I'm going to put a little poll up about what tomorrow night's whiskey will be. There'll be a few in outturn that I can pick from, so we're going to go from there. Thank you so much. Tune in tomorrow night. Of course, then Wednesday night is Whiskey Roundtable with a very, very, very special guest. And then Thursday night is the last sort of outturn preview and then Friday outturn. Have a great week and I'll see you all soon. Cheers.